Arthur, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> this is the last time we'll be meeting. You don't listen, do you? How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. And the champion! Reigning that in! You are now listening to me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Joshua Freeman. And welcome back to Joshua vs. Movies, where we react, review, and go against all your favorite movies. Today, the movie I'll be going against, standing in the purple corner, Joker. Joker came out in 2019 and was directed by Todd Phillips. Joker tells the story of Arthur Fleck and his transformation into the Joker. The movie stars Joaquin Phoenix, Robert De Niro, and Zazie Beetz. The movie was praised by critics, but we'll see who the joke is on when it goes against me. The genre of the movie will be drama, while the visuals and the stunts will represent how well the visual effects and certain shots look throughout the movie. If you guys have any questions on the scoring template for each category, it will be in the description below. But I think we're all set. So without further ado, let's get to the review. Fight! Round 1. The news never ends. This is 1080 GCR. I'm Stan L. Brooks, and here's what's happening. Health Commissioner Edward O'Rourke is declaring a citywide state of emergency for the first time in decades. You can't go down no, no one avenue without seeing nothing but garbage and rats. But I think to look at it, it's terrible. It don't affect me, except... I've been in this country for 50 years, and I've never seen anything like it. The idea of the National Guard rolling in and cleaning up is a good idea. <laughs> Rangers in the metro area are searching to feel the pain. Okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. I like this opening scene for the movie. It does a nice job exposition-wise with the radio talking about the garbage in the city and all the rats. And the movie also does well introducing Arthur. And it's pretty known that smiling at yourself in the mirror helps fight off stress and caboose your mood. And I like how Arthur basically does it to get him in the mood to act like a clown and be happy at his job. Not to mention the movie looking at Arthur's inner thoughts with his journal. Fight! Round two. Authorities are saying the city is under siege by scores of rats. It's Thomas Wayne, well, he's a busy man. Please. I worked for that family for years. The least he could do is write back. He'll make a great mayor. Everybody says so. Oh, yeah? Come sit, it's starting. It's live with Murray Franklin. Great-looking audience tonight. He's I not love you, Hey, Bobby, will you put the lights on? Who was that? Was that you? You want to stand up, please? Stand, stand up. What's your name? Hi, Murray. Arthur. Arthur. My name's Arthur. I live right here in the city with my mother. All that sacrifice, she must love you very much. She does. I like that a lot. Come on down. Come on, for that you gotta come down. Come on! That was 
was great, Arthur. Thank you. I mean, I, I love to hear what you had to say. It made my day. Thanks, Murray. Okay, so the movie's going to earn a point right here. There's two things I like about the scene. First, I like the movie showcasing Arthur's imagination with him on the Murray Franklin show. And second, how the movie has Arthur's mom used to work for the Waynes. And I gotta say, it's a nice inclusion. Fight! Round three. You okay? It was just a bunch of kids. I should have left it alone. No, I'll take everything from you if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta protect yourself out there. You want me to shoot them? They're just kids. No one has to know. And you can pay me back some other time. You know you're my boy. Hey, Gary. You know what I've always wondered? Do you people call it miniature golf, or is it just golf to you? <laughs> <laughs> Gary said you wanted to see me. Uh, the guy said you disappeared. Never even returned his sign. Because I got jumped. You did. Didn't you hear? Didn't hear that. It's bullshit. It doesn't even make sense. Just give him a sign back. Why would, would I keep his <laughs> Why would I take a sign? Why, why does anybody do anything? Listen, I'm trying to help you. Okay? I can't have that around here. I... Sheesh. Okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. This scene isn't bad with Arthur getting a gun. I also like how Arthur's imagination in the last scene showed what he really wanted, which is basically for someone to be nice to him or for people to be nice in general, like how Murray was in his daydream. I mean, since the movie has started, Arthur has gotten jumped for no reason. The social worker that he goes to is shown not to listen to him. I think I told you I'm pursuing a career in stand-up comedy. No, you didn't. I think I did. And to add insult to injury, his boss didn't even believe him when he said he got jumped. I mean, Arthur is basically looking for some empathy and compassion. So it makes sense why he takes out his frustration on the bags in the alley. <laughs> and I gotta say, Joaquin Phoenix does a masterful job acting-wise. It also makes sense why he would follow Zazie Beats after having some type of interaction with her in the elevator. I mean, she actually interacted with him and wasn't mean to him. So awful, Mom. Right, Mommy? And when it comes to the actors and the acting in the movie, they end up being one of the highlights of the movie. Joaquin Phoenix does an iconic job displaying the title character, as the movie does a great job helping him show off his acting talents. From the laugh, which is so good and reminds me a lot of Mark Hamill. It's Monday and Wednesday. To all the other little things that he displayed. I forgot to punch out. Robert De Niro is also a great inclusion as Maury Franklin and Zazie Beetz is good as well as Sophie. So with that, the movie earns a 1.0 out of 1.0 for actors and acting. Fight! Round 4. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy. Wait, please. I love this job. Oh my god. Randall told me you tried to buy a 38 off him last week. What? Randall told you that? You're fired. I'm telling you, she wanted my number. You should have just stayed. No, wait, wait, wait. Ryan, Ryan, am I crazy? Tell him what you saw. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. I like this scene with Arthur getting fired and him shooting the guys on the train. This is also the first step in his transformation. The second step is a social worker office shutting down and his medicine being cut off. We're closing down our offices next week. This is the last time we'll be meeting. Am I supposed to get my medication now? Who do I talk to? And when it comes to the directing by Todd Phillips, it ends up being masterful as he does a great job incorporating meaningful and nice shots in the movie. I also like how Phillips directs the scene with Arthur's imagination and also Arthur dancing in the bathroom. So with that, the movie earns a 1.0 out of 1.0 for directing. Also, the music in the movie ends up being really good as well. All the songs in the movie are very well placed and this turns out to be a good inclusion in the movie. So with that, the movie earns a 0.2 out of 0.2 for music. Fight! Round 5 Good night, and always remember, that's life. Happy, I wrote a new letter. Come on, you cancel me. Don't forget to mail it. The Murray Franklin Show is taped live before a studio audience in beautiful downtown Gotham City. that we not be together because of appearances. And besides, you can imagine what people would say about Thomas and me and... Oh my goodness. Okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. I like this inclusion in the movie with Arthur possibly being Thomas Wayne's son, which also means Bruce Wayne's brother. <laughs> I will say I didn't really need to see Bruce as a kid in the movie though. <laughs> Fight! Round six. Can I help you, pal? Penny Fleck is my mother. Oh, wait, wait, you're the sick fuck that put your hands in Bruce's mouth? You son of a bitch. I'm sorry, I just showed up, but my mother told me everything. Look, pal, you're... I'm not your father. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Because you were adopted, and I never slept with your mother. What do you want from me, money? No, I don't, I wasn't adopted. Your mother adopted you while she was working for us. That's not true. And she was arrested and committed to Arkham State Hospital. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable. I don't know why everyone is so rude. I don't want anything from you. Maybe a little bit of warmth. Maybe a hug, Dad. How about just a little bit of fucking decency? <laughs> Touch my son again, <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so the movie's going to earn a point right here. 
Yes, I love how the movie throws out the possibility that Arthur and Bruce could be related and then immediately takes it back by including that his mom possibly has dementia, made up the whole relationship, and Arthur could be adopted. I also like how Arthur goes off on Thomas reaffirming what I said earlier about him wanting people to show some type of empathy or compassion. <laughs> Fight! Round 7 Show Booker from Live with Murray Franklin. And Murray asked if I would reach out to you to see if you would come on as his guest. Murray wants me on the Murray Franklin show. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, that sounds great. Sorry about that, my man. All records, 10 years older, they're still in the basement, and you're talking about something 30 years ago, so. <laughs> All right, here it is. Fleck, Penny Fleck. All right, well, the patient suffers from delusional psychosis and narcissistic psychosis. personality disorder. Mm. Was found guilty of endangering the welfare of her own child. I'm sorry, man. Like I said, I can't release these records, you know. Without um, proper forms, I, I... also stood by when one of your boyfriends repeatedly abused your adopted son. <laughs> your son was found tied to a radiator, malnourished with multiple bruises across his body and severe trauma to his head. <laughs> Okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. One of the best things about the Joker is how he doesn't really have a backstory. And even though this movie introduces one for him, I like how the movie still leaves a lot of questions revolving who he really is. And I like how it settled on Arthur being adopted and abused as a child causing his disability. I also love the movie including Arthur imagining Zazie Beast the whole time. I mean, the movie already established that Arthur likes to imagine himself in situations in which people are being nice to him. First, it was him with Murray. You see all this, the lights, the show, the audience, all that stuff? I'd give it all up in a heartbeat to have a kid like you. Then it was with Zazie Beats on the elevator. And as he started descending more into madness, he started imagining more things with her. Do you believe that shit? I think the guy that did it is a hero. And when it comes to the plot and the story, it ends up being great, mainly because of all the details they placed in the movie, from Arthur and his relationship with Thomas Wayne to how society causing him to become mad. So with that, the movie earns a 1.0 out of 1.0 for plot and story. Fight! Round 8. I always hated that name. <laughs> I haven't been happy one minute of my entire fucking life. You know what's funny? I used to think that my life was a tragedy. But now I realize it's a fucking comedy.
Okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. This scene isn't bad with Arthur killing his moms. Fight! <laughs> Round nine. You gotta see our next guest for yourself. I'm pretty sure this guy could use a doctor. <laughs> okay. But this is how he wanted to come out. So please welcome Joker. Right, doctor. Well, that was quite an entrance. <laughs> so, can you tell us about this look? I'm uh, just trying to make people laugh. And how's that going for you? <laughs> so, so, I know you're a comedian. And you've been working on any new material. You want to tell us a joke? Got a book. <laughs> okay, okay. Here's one. Knock, knock. And you had to look that up? <laughs> you had to look that up? <laughs> Who's there? It's the police, ma'am. Your son's been hit by a drunk driver. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's not funny, Arthur. That's not the kind of humor we do on this show. It's been a rough few weeks, Murray. <laughs> Ever since I... Killed those three Wall Street guys. Got it. Got the feet. Got it. <laughs> Got the feet. Red bud. And why should we believe you? you? Got nothing left to lose. My life is nothing but a comedy. <laughs> comedy is subjective, Murray. Isn't that what they say? Did this to start a movement? To become a, a symbol? Do I look like the kind of clown that could start a movement? Do I really look like a guy with a plan? I killed those guys because they were awful. Everybody is awful these days. Mm. It's enough to make anyone crazy. If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me. Everybody just yells and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore. Nobody thinks what it's like to be the other guy. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. You just wanted to make fun of me. Mm. You're just like the rest of them. You don't know the first thing about me, pal. How about another Score. joke? Score! I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loader, call the police. You get what you fucking deserve! And always remember, that's my, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so the movie's gonna earn a point right here. What a scene with Arthur killing Murray on live television. And when it comes to the drama in the movie, it ends up being really good. Everything that happened that caused Arthur to snap was a lot, but it is Gotham, so I guess it's believable. <laughs> The drama in the movie isn't perfect though, as there's a couple of conveniences that happens that allows Arthur to complete his objective on television. From them not cutting the feed the minute he admitted to the subway murders, to Gary not calling the cops after seeing Arthur just kill a man. Not to mention the cops already wanted to talk to him before the show. But nevertheless, it is still good. So with that, the movie earns a 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 for drama. Fight! Final round, round 10. With black curtains near the station. Stop laughing, you freak. This isn't fun. Yeah, the whole fucking city's on fire because of what you did. Isn't it beautiful?
Okay, so that's gonna be my point. This scene isn't bad with everyone being inspired by the Joker. I just don't understand how he survives this car crash, and also I don't need to see Bruce's parents get murdered again. I mean, I don't understand why they would be going down a dark alley during a huge riot instead of, you know, waiting for Alfred or something inside the theater. But whatever. And when it comes to the visuals and the stunts, they end up being really good and one of the highlights of the movie. The movie does a great job providing symbolism throughout the movie, showing Arthur's descent to madness. And since the movie is from Arthur's point of view, it makes sense. From the clocks constantly reading 1111, illustrating Arthur's mood, to the stairs in the movie illustrating him trying to climb out of his insanity. I mean, after he first got jumped and was yelled at on the bus. Please stop bothering my kid. I wasn't bothering him. Just stop. Me. I was he struggles up the stairs showing how he's trying to climb out of his own insanity. Then the same thing happens after his boss doesn't believe him when he got jumped. He once again struggles up the stairs trying to climb out of his own insanity. And then after he kills the guys on the subway and is fired from his job, the movie shows him going down the stairs as he descends into his insanity. Oh, hear my name, Carnival. And if you notice, he doesn't really go up any more stairs for the rest of the movie because he's no longer trying to climb out of his own insanity. He's only descending into it deeper. He does go up the stairs when he sneaks into the benefit, but he was there to talk to Thomas, whom he thought was his dad. And with him thinking he would be embraced, in that moment he tried to climb out again. And then the last time he walks down the stairs, his transformation is complete as he dances and embraces it. Also, the set design in the movie is great, and the few visual effects that are used in the movie are good as well such as the scene with Gary Witness and Arthur Kill. So with that, the movie earns a 0 0.5 out of 0 0.5 for visuals and stunts. <laughs> so there you guys have it. That's my match against the Joker. It turns out the joke is on me as I end up losing this one. We're not done yet though. Let's go see where it fits on the scale. Let's go check out the final numbers. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to the final numbers, we have everything except for the editing. There wasn't any problems in terms of the editing, so that'll remain a 0 0.3 out of 0 0.3. So now that we have all the numbers, let's add them up. So the movie ends up with a 4.4 out of 4.5, and that gives it an A++ rating. So there you guys have it. That's my movie review of The Joker. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, and also let me know which movie you want me to go against. But until then, this is Joshua Freeman. This has been Joshua vs. Movies. I'm going to see you guys in the next match. <laughs> extra, extra, read all about it. Extra, 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 read all about it. Ooh. Ah. Damn. I say, I am. <laughs> Took you long enough. Could have done this back in phase one, though. Be careful of mankind, Diana.